So the relation between EMF and voltage, voltage means terminal voltage. Terminal voltage will denote it with V and EMF will denote it with E. Now, you see, let us take an example of a positive charge, let us say. So if I start for a positive charge, I can think that, okay, H plus has broken from here. SO4 is over here, right? So H plus starts from here, starts moving like this, correct? I'm now thinking in context to motion of the positive charge. So this positive charge moves like this, although the positive charge is not moving, but you can perceive the motion of the negative charge as the motion of the positive charge in opposite direction. Okay, so then we can think of all this coming over here and then completing one full cycle. Okay, the amount of work done in doing so, in completing the full cycle is called as EMF. The amount of work done in doing so is called as EMF. No problem. So EMF is the total work done. To complete this full cycle no problem now the terminal potential is the amount of work done in going from one terminal to another terminal one terminal to another terminal okay so let us say we say that this amount so the amount of work done in going from one terminal to another terminal is equal to v right so the amount of work done in going from one terminal to another terminal is equal to v correct then how much extra do you have to do how much extra work do you require you require work from where to where? To move between the terminals, correct? If I is the current and R is the internal resistance, how much extra do you require? How much extra do you require? You require plus I into R. So what do you get? E is equal to V plus IR. And then if you rearrange this, so this is the relation between E and V. No problem. So you can clearly see that while discharging, the value of the EMF is greater than the value of the terminal potential when the battery is getting discharged. So you can write V is equal to E minus I times R. Okay. Did you get this? All right. The total work done from this point to this point is EMF. Okay. Work done from this point to this point is V. So what will be the work done from here to here? So V plus IR. Did you understand? From here to here, it is V. So V plus IR will give you EMF. V plus IR will give you EMF. Did you understand? Okay. So that's how you get this expression. V is equal to E minus IR or even you can write E is equal to V plus IR, whatever it is. If you want, you can also use what? Kirchhoff's rule. You can also use simply Kirchhoff's rule. I'll show you even by Kirchhoff's rule. Don't worry. Okay. Just giving you a feel of what happens. So for the entire cycle, the total thing is 100, let us say, okay? If the potential, if the potential, terminal potential is 80, then how much extra do you require to move between the electrodes? How much? 20, right? So what we are saying is 80 plus 20 is equal to 100. The total work done is equal to 100. Between moving the terminals, be moving between the terminals, that is equal to what? Externally, I am talking about, right? That is equal to terminal potential. And then... As you move between the two electrodes, that is equal to I into small r because small r is the internal resistance, right? So the total work will be E is equal to V plus I into small r. As simple as it can get. Did you get a whole feel of this EMF? I'll also prove it by using Kirchhoff's rule. Don't worry, okay? Anyways, once we have understood this, we need to star mark one very simple formula, of course, and that is V is equal to E minus IR. What will be the value of V? Of course, V will be equal to I into capital R because this is external to the circuit, right? So where I'm assuming the entire resistance over here is equal to capital R. R is the external resistance. Small r, that is capital R is the external resistance and small r is the internal resistance. So I, ho I hope you have got every element of this formula figured out. Very clear. Yes. Now let's do a justice to the proof that we were talking about. So let us talk about discharging of a cell, which was the condition just now, which we were discussing. Now, if in this case, if you want me to apply Kirchhoff's rule, starting from point A, coming towards B, what I can write? I can write VA, correct? And as I move ahead, I encounter which terminal for the battery, right? Or the cell, it is positive, which means minus E. And as I go ahead, I encounter this 
resistance which resistance internal resistance now for resistance what we were seeing what we were looking at we were looking at the direction of motion and the direction of current if the direction of motion and the direction of current were in the same direction we used negative sign if the direction of motion was opposite to the direction of current we used what positive sign remember that so if for any resistances we were used to looking at the direction of current so if the direction of motion and the direction of current is in opposite direction we'll take plus ir right if it was opposite negative in case of a cell what we used to do we used to see which terminal we are encountering first so if we are encountering this negative terminal first then it should be if this is e then it should be with plus sign plus e correct so what we can write what we can write let me write it over here va and as you can see the direction of current and the direction of motion is opposite to each other in this case then definitely i should go with i should go with with sign plus sign and for the battery if you see i encounter as i move from a towards b i encounter positive terminal first which means it is obvious that we are going from where to where we are going from higher potential to lower potential so i should take a negative sign so v a minus e plus i into small r and now we have reached where now we have reached at point b so should be equal to vb so this is equal to vb now we know va minus vb is nothing but the external terminal potential right or this is nothing but equal to v right okay so what we can write va minus vb is equal to is equal to e minus ir va minus vb is nothing but v for us terminal potential e minus i exactly the same stuff that we have got even by our normal understanding or if you want to do it by kirchhoff's law here it is very simple easy right noted it down i'm sure you are making running notes these things are interesting it's obvious these are interesting but once you get a nick of the story then you'll start understanding the formula and once that starts happening then you'll start loving solving the questions you love to solve the problems then because then questions will become easy for you the questions are going to become a cake walk for you anyways so if the cell is getting discharged it is driving the current of course so if the cell is getting discharged it is the one which is making the current move across the circuit and from here itself one very important expression that we get is that of current so i is equal to e by capital r plus small r how you see we have got v is equal to e minus ir we know v is equal to sorry this is smaller right ir v is equal to ir external resistance i into r is equal to e minus i into small r. now what we want to get the value of current i so i will be equal to e by capital r plus external resistance plus internal resistance no problem okay and obviously you can see while discharging the value of emf will always be greater than the value of the terminal potential value of emf will always be greater than the value of terminal potential is this point clear no problem okay all right easy okay so this is what we have now if we dig a little bit further into it and if i have got the value of current that is i is equal to e divided by capital r plus small r and i want to know what are the situations when this value of terminal potential will become equal to the value of emf okay so if i can write from here v is equal to i into r and i know the value of i is this so i can write v is equal to er divided by capital r plus small r okay and if i rearrange this further i can write v is equal to e divided by we'll have 1 plus small r by capital r don't we no problem okay now the situations where this v will be equal to e so v can be equal to e when if this small r is equal to 0 if this small r becomes equal to 0 see if this small r becomes equal to 0 this entire thing will become equal to 0 it will be v is equal to e by 1 correct that's one case or otherwise we can have the current itself to be equal to 0 that is the value of i becomes equal to 0 the value of i becomes equal to 0 if the value of i becomes equal to 0 you know v is equal to e minus ir so if ir 
you see i is multiplied with r right so this entire term ir term will become equal to zero if the current is zero which is the case of open circuit correct so whenever they tell you okay the value of the terminal potential when the circuit is open this is how they will coin it in the question whenever they give you statements like this you should understand that what they are talking about is the emf this is the takeaway actually okay so this is how you should understand it very simply they will try to trap you in different different ways in in context to nomenclature they will try to use different nomenclatures and they'll try to trap you like that but you are smart right you know what all these terms stands for okay so in an open circuit the value of the terminal potential becomes equal to the emf and that we have also seen in the story as well okay and when r becomes equal to infinity if r is so large that is external resistance is so large it tends to infinity let us say then this entire term will become equal to zero again we will be equal to e okay so when the situation is that internal resistance is equal to zero we call that as an ideal cell okay we call that as an ideal cell when i is equal to zero we say that it is a case of open circuit and when r is equal to infinity we say that we denote it as an ideal case where external resistance is so much in compared to internal resistance that you get v is equal to e so these three cases is what you might encounter okay wherein you have the value of v is equal to e which means the terminal potential becomes equal to emf so this was all all for discharging of the cell wherein the cell is only driving and making all these charges move across in the circuit but we all see that when our mobile gets discharged we plug in right and the current starts flowing in a opposite direction and that is called as charging of a cell so what happens in case of charging of a cell well probably not too much but you should understand that what happens now the direction of current will be reversed because now from positive terminal current will enter and from negative terminal it will go outside because now you are charging this cell all right so when that happens let's get an expression again for the terminal potential so i what i can write is if i'm moving from a towards b what i can write v a and as i encounter the positive terminal over here correct remember that for a cell or a battery you don't look at the direction of current what you look for is the terminal even for capacitor what you look for is the terminal remember that so as i encounter positive terminal which means it should be minus e correct as i go ahead i see that the direction of current and direction of motion is the same which means this should be minus i into small r correct okay and then this should be equal to v so what do we get v a minus v b is equal to is equal to e plus i r e plus i into small r correct okay all right now v a minus v b is nothing but terminal potential v so v is equal to e plus i r what has changed see in discharging you had v is equal to e minus i r in discharging you had the terminal potential less than the emf but while charging while charging it is the terminal potential is more than the emf and it is obvious it is obvious if you want to charge a 12 volt battery let us say when you are plugging it it must be having a higher potential no higher potential than this emf then only let us say 16 volts so only from 16 volt you will be able to charge 12 volt battery right are you getting this point if this itself is of 9 volt and you want to charge this of 12 volt that will not happen right did you understand this so it is obvious that now the terminal potential has to be more okay did you get this so in case when you are charging a particular cell then what happens is the value of the terminal potential v is greater than e okay so always be very careful what they have given you in the question all right about whether it is a condition of discharging or whether it is a condition of charging perfect